Um, yeah, well, it's sort of this awkward startup delay, but I think it's working now. Um, so here's going to be part two of this video. Uh, here was the problem we were solving, okay? Um, and in the first case, we considered both nodes one and two to be fixed, or the displacements at those nodes to be um, zero, right? These are what we call homogeneous boundary conditions, okay? Now in the second case, we're going to have node one fixed, but we're going to prescribe a displacement to the right uh, 0.2 inches at the second node. Okay, so that's going to be an example of an inhomogeneous boundary condition. Now, with the homogeneous boundary conditions, the way we looked at it is we basically solved this reduced system. And what allowed us to do that was the fact that when we write it in this column form, knowing that D1 and D2 are both zero, these two columns zero out, and all we are left with are these uh, that system of equations, basically, right? So that eliminates, to explicitly solve D1 and D2 or impose if they're equal to zero. Likewise, the other two unknowns, F1 and F2, can be ignored for a little bit while we solve this reduced two by two equation, just for the D3 and the D4. Then once we know that, we can go back basically into the original system of equation and solve for the reaction forces, all right? All right. So let's go and do case two, all right? So uh, it's the same problem, so I just rewrote the uh, system of equations we have here, okay? You can see it's the same stiffness matrix, D1 through D4, and the same right-hand side, right? We have the unknown F1 and F2, the reaction forces in F1 and F2. But in this case, D1 is zero, and now D2 is no longer zero, but 0.2 inches, okay? so. D1 is zero, okay? So that's a homogeneous boundary condition. Again, that basically allows us to set this entire column to a zero column. Now, I can't do that with D2, but this is known, right? This is a known value. It is 0 0.02, all right? So this basically becomes, if we do this multiplication out, I get zero. Uh, 20, wait, no, not 20, minus, uh, I'm sorry, actually, this becomes 0, 2, minus 2, and 0, right? 0. 0.02, ah, what am I doing? It's 0. 0.2, I don't know, it's 0. 0.2 here, I wrote, I am so sorry, Ugh, it's the end of the day, okay, 0. 0.2, wow, let's erase everything, all right, so it's what I originally had. If D2 goes to point 0.2, there's no reason why I would go to something different. It's point 0.2, all right? Then point 0.2 times this column vector would give me the following, right? 0, 20, minus 20, and 0. Okay, hopefully I did that right, all right? All right, well, fine. Um, it's known, but it doesn't go to 0. So I can't just solve the same reduced system we had before. Uh, somehow I have to account for this, but this is quite easy. We will just subtract it from both sides, okay? So what we will have is finally, so we will subtract Obviously, you subtract from the left side, it goes away and we get the same thing we had before, but we also have to subtract it from the right-hand side. It's gonna alter our force vector, okay? So what we have now is actually minus 50, minus 100, 210, and minus 60, all times the unknown D3, plus zero, zero, minus 60, and 60, times D4, right? Now that's going to equal F1, F2, 0, and 200, but I also have to subtract from that 0, 20, minus 20, 0. So this new right-hand side vector becomes F1, 
f2 minus 20. That actually won't really matter, but we'll just put it in there to be correct. Uh, minus a minus 20, that becomes 20, all right? And then 200 minus 0 is still just 200, okay? So basically, this force due to the actual stretching, like if you think about it, this is the fact, no, I'm sorry, this, this vector here is the force that comes about because the first spring has been, well, yeah, the second spring has been stretched because d2 is not zero, okay? So it's basically taking that force, in a sense, pushing it and bringing that over to the right-hand side, okay? So now I can solve this reduced system just like I did before. But I have to use that altered uh, right-hand side. So basically, what we're going to solve for the reduced system is now changed a little bit, but just on the right-hand side vector. 210 minus 60 minus 60, 60. That matrix actually stays the same, times D3, D4, and that is now going to equal 20, so that's what's changed, and the 200, all right? And so that's the only thing that's changed, but that's what's going to make the difference, okay? So you can just go in and solve this system, and then go back and take the solution and multiply it by the original stiffness matrix. Uh, and that will give you the answer, okay? I'll show you a little trick here in MATLAB, I guess. Just uh, not really a trick, but it's just, it's just an easier way to do this using the MATLAB sort of uh, notation for addressing um, regions of a matrix, okay? So right here was our original stiffness matrix. And now here's our force vector. I still have zeros here because, um, you know, um, I can't type in F1, F2, and... This was the original, like, initial external force vector. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take this second column here, right? Multiply it by the value, the inhomogeneous value for D2, the point 0.2, and subtract it from, I'm sorry, this F. So actually, I can do that in MATLAB pretty easily. I'm going to say F, we'll call it F mod, okay? F mod equals F this F minus 0 0.2, that's the value of D2, right, multiplied by the second column. So the way we get the second column is going to be uh, all the rows, so we use the colon to denote all the rows, and it's the second column, okay? And so you see that's what we got, right? So actually if I just do you know, this, for those who haven't seen it, right? That gives me the second, this notation gives me the second column of K. So I can get this modified right-hand side by just doing this, okay? And now what I want to do is I want to solve the reduced system. So KR, again, I'll use this little notation to make my life a little simpler so I don't have to rewrite everything. It's going to be K rows three, no, I'm sorry rows three and four, columns three and four. So there it is, it's the same as we were before. And my F reduced is going to be the second two rows of my modified F vector. All right, now, you know, if you want to retype everything, that's fine too. I don't really care at this point in time. But when we get to more complicated things, if you get used to this, it'll make your life a lot easier, okay? All right, I'll do some later on where we actually, you know, you can use the same steps regardless of the stiffness matrix, okay? All right, so there we go. So now we want to solve the reduced system, dr equals the reduced stiffness matrix uh, and the reduced force vector, okay? Now you can see we get different displacements, all right? The actual displacement vector is going to be 0, 0.2, and then dr. That's my solution. So you can see I just, here we have the known value of 0.2 for the second, displacement of the second node, and then our solution, all right? Now, 
Now, if we multiply this by the original stiffness matrix, this will do two things. One, of course, it'll give us the reaction forces at nodes one and two, but it'll also serve as a check. We should get force balance on the third and fourth nodes, and we should get zero and 200, right? Okay, so let's just make sure. Now, hopefully this works, otherwise I'm gonna have to redo this video, but let's do K times D. All right, and it worked, right? So here is the reaction force at the first note, minus 73 pounds. The reaction force at the second note is minus 127 pounds. And we recovered the original forces, external forces at nodes three and four. So equilibrium is satisfied there. So the solution is valid, okay? Okay. All right, so that's pretty much it, okay? So uh, just to review, to summarize it really quickly, let's go back to this. So you can think of it this way, right? And if you have all zero displacement values, all homogeneous, which, which actually happens the majority of the times, usually you're prescribing displacements to be zero, it's quite easy. You just ignore all those columns and rows associated with those fixed degrees of freedom, and you solve the reduced system that's left, okay? Now, if you have a case where you have a prescribed displacement, but it is not zero, you have to take the column vector associated with that inhomogeneous displacement, take that column vector, multiply it by the value, the, the displacement, and then subtract that from the right-hand side. At that point, then you can go through all the same steps, solve the same reduced system, take the solution, put it back, and multiply it by the original stiffness matrix, and retain the reaction forces, okay? So that's the way we're going to do that in this class. Okay, thanks.